Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Harry Wolf and I like to talk about coding around these parts. Today I'm going to do a classic but a goodie, a topic that I can't even believe I never talked about. More of a beginner topic, which I don't always do, so I'm glad I'm delving back to my roots. But the question to talk about today is, what is JSX? A question that I have honestly gotten so far away from that when I was researching this video to make it, I relearned many things that I had forgotten, which is the benefits of these videos for me because I get to re-remember things I think I know using JSX for a while uh, to teach everyone out there what it is. So if you are both an advanced React user or a beginner React user, I think this video will be helpful to either teach you or remind you what is JSX. So, of course, the best place to learn about JSX is at jsx.com. Wait a second. That's not JSX. <laughs> of course, JSX is the syntax extension that React brought into the world of JavaScript. When it was first introduced, when, when React was first introduced with JSX, the entire JavaScript community effectively recoiled as if it was a vampire, Dracula incarnate coming to take away their beloved separation of concerns. It was the most heretical thing since putting bread inside of your slicer. It was repulsive and now it is rigorously beloved. So the question is why was JSX introduced? And the simple answer is that it made writing UI in JavaScript easy. That was the whole reason writing HTML like syntax instead of JavaScript, um, even to this day, is a painful exercise because JavaScript is not built for markup. It's a coding language, not for markup. So, what the React creators did is they made this syntax extension that is a hybrid of HTML and JavaScript, and hence why it's called JSX. And the big thing to know about JSX how it works is that it's transformed at compile time. Um, one thing to note before I go into the comp compilation, um, it is possible to use React or JSX without, uh, it's possible to use React without JSX. Like if you were to use React without JSX, you could just write the full fledged code that looks like this, react.createElement. Um, and that's kind of the big, what is JSX right here? Um, I'm always a, fi a fan of looking in the Babel REPL to kind of see what is happening. But when Babel or whatever compiler takes your JSX code, it's simply transforming it into code that will be ran in the browser. So this JSX here, this div, is actually converted by Babel to this react.createElement call, where the first argument is the element type, which is div, the content is over here and that's it. So I change this into a span. You'll see that this converts into a span. That's the big idea with JSX is that it's some syntax sugar that is then compiled down to just function calls. And these function calls reduce react elements. Uh, a react element is literally a JavaScript object that just has metadata associated that tells React what you actually want to show in the browser. So there's two ways to get running with React with JSX or without JSX. Um, you can add a whole pipeline of Babel or Webpack, or you can also just quickly try it out in the browser. There's on this page here, add React to a website. Um, there's a uh, simple, quickly try, where'd I put it? The easiest way is to have Babel compile your code in the browser itself. So here's a very uh, bare bones example page of how you can actually write JSX in an HTML file with no compilation. Like if you were to run this file, it would run fine in the browser. And it's doing that by including Babel, which is a code, a JavaScript compiler. And then it looks for script tags of type text Babel and then it'll convert all that code through the Babel compiler. So it'll actually grab that content, and this is not actually a script tag, so the browser won't run it. It'll be um, grabbed by Babel and then re-injected as a script tag. 
and it'll actually convert that for you. So you actually can write an entire React application with no compiler. Of course, the easier way to do that is by actually having a compilation step, which Babel, Webpack, Parcel, Vite, uh, all these tools exist now to do that compilation for you, but that's kind of um, how you can use JSX in your applications. Um, there's also this awesome library called HTML, HTM, which I'm curious if this idea came at the onset of React, if things might have looked a little bit differently. Um, this is hyperscript tagged markup. And essentially it leverages the power of template literals to let you write React code that looks like React without using any compilation at all. So for example, the usage is in here where the whole magic from pre from HTM is this HTML template literal function. And this is all the content in here. It's not exactly like React, there are some differences, but it kind of lets you use JSX, what looks like JSX in a template tag uh, without any compilation with Babel or at compile time at all. Okay, so now that we know why JS exists and how you kind of can add it to the browser or through your compile chain, let's actually talk about how it works. Again, you can just write this JSX code. It kind of looks like HTML with a few gotchas. The first gotcha is that React must always be in scope when using JSX. And the reason for that is that if you were to write this code on a page and compile it, this is what's ran in the browser. Can you catch the issue here right now? It's calling react.createElement, but if you're using a bundler, React is not gonna be in scope and it's just gonna throw an error because it has no reference to React at all. So instead, what you always have to do when using JSX is you have to import React to make it in scope such that when you actually call it, it's actually calling create element on the right React library. Also, there's a few different ways of writing JSX. Let me remove this just for sake of readability. Um, so by default, JSX supports every HTML primitive. So you have divs, you have buttons, anything that is a built-in HTML element, you're gonna have for free by JSX. Now, of course, one of the strengths of React is the ability to write your own custom components. And the big gotcha here is that they must be capitalized. So you write here, uh, my button. Just like that. Uh, and this is how React knows whether to make it a string, like a reference to a button on the page, or actually a reference to a component on here. So it's a convention where if it's capitalized, it's a reference to that variable, where it's actually gonna put that here. And if it's not capitalized, it's just a regular button. So then if I just lowercase that, it goes to a string. And likewise, if I make this a capitalized, it's just a convention right here. Likewise, let's say you have, a, you wanna dynamically uh, render different React components. Let's say you have um, comps and you have um, uh, header, uh, it, let's pretend that's a component, uh, footer. And let's say we wanna dynamically render header or, or footer, footer, footer. So there's two ways, three ways actually you can render this. One is that you can actually do um, comps.header and that renders fine because it's just getting a reference to that object. Or you can also do is just get a reference to it and then just use it by itself. So you can do header equals uh, comps header and then just use it here. Because that's just JavaScript. And that's a big thing with JSX is that aside from its few special cases, it is primarily JavaScript. So if you ever get confused about what's happening with JSX and why it's behaving some way, remember what it's compiling down to. Some of the trees can get very nested. You have create element here, um, and you have all these children, which can get kind of hard to read, but by and large, it's just JavaScript. What I find also helpful is understanding how react.createElement works. You can actually look up the API on the docs page to see that it takes in a type, which can either be a string to an HTML or a component. It takes in props as the second argument, optional argument. And then the third is a splat of children. So it's n number of children that can be added to create element, which is what you see here. You have hello, uh, button, button, header. That's what you see just being connected here, uh, which brings us to props. You can actually have um, 
you know, uh, so one of the gotchas with JSX, and this is a kind of implementation detail leaking out, is that you actually can't write class on a JSX element. You actually have to write class name. And that's because when React takes these uh, elements, it actually uses, it actually applies these styles, it applies the properties via the DOM API, not the HTML attribute API, which is a fancy way of saying that like, if you get a reference to a div in memory in JavaScript and you wanna change the class name, the property on that element, on that variable in JavaScript is class name. However, in HTML, the property on there is class. And JavaScript works mostly in JavaScript world, which means that it needs to have a class name on there. But this is just a string of class names that you can add. And then it's just being appended here. You can add in um, a prop of, you know, an ID, a foo. All these things are just appended as an object there. And there's a few different things you can do with properties. So you can actually put a variable. So you can do um, foo equals Harry. And you can actually make that your ID by interpolating the variable here, which is kind of like how template literals you can interpolate. And this, these braces, when you have braces inside of JSX, it's a raw uh, interpolation of that variable. So you can see here, it's just actually making a reference to that string there. So actually I can put whatever valid JavaScript expression that I want inside here and it'll be okay. Cause it's just gonna actually pass that through right there. No problem. Um, you can also see, you can just do plain strings. You could do just strings as an expression. So blah uh, is a string, which is just not necessary because you actually can just use a string directly. Um, true and false is also a fun one where you can actually have um, hidden. And by default, any prop without any value is gonna be defaulted to true. So you can actually say hidden if you want it to be false. You can say, whoa, uh, false like this, or you can also just say true if you want to be explicit about it. And let's say you want to pass a bunch of properties down, you have like some big object, you know, um, we'll say JSON equals name, uh, age, write that. Rather than passing those all down, what you can do, uh, what you can do is actually spread them onto the component. Oh man, I got a new keyboard and I'm not doing well on this like that. And I'll just apply those arguments on here through an extends onto the, onto the props here. So all those will be copied over and passed down to that component. So that's props. Let's talk about, so let me just clean this up so we can actually can read the uh, compiled code a little bit easier. Um, let's talk about children. So by default, uh, you can put any string you want into a JSX as a children. You can see it's being added here. Uh, any white space you add is just stripped. JSX ignores it. So if you actually want to have explicit white space, you actually have to interpolate explicit white space, which is kind of funny. You can see it being added here. Um, you can put in undefined, which is just ignored. If you have a variable that has undefined, that's not being added. It's just going to be ignored when it's actually rendered by React. Same with null and, under, same with null and Boolean values. And then also what's kind of cool is that because again, this is just JavaScript, you can actually make a uh, function as a child. And this is gonna return, hello. And there you go. And this is a function that returns hello. So React, when it runs this children function, it'll run that and return the value here. You can kind of return whatever you want in here. And it's kind of very powerful where there's different ways that you can have manipulate that to your advantage with that. And that's kind of the high and low of JSX. Um, there is a whole page that goes in depth on JSX, which is kind of what I just rehashed with you. So if you want to like get a refresher, this is definitely a good place for it. Um, but it's that's the skinny of it. Uh, mostly HTML, there's a few gotchas to be aware about. You can pass functions as props as well because it's just JavaScript. I always find it helpful to remember what it compiles down to. So what I think is also very cool about JSX is how it's actually impacted the entire JavaScript community where other frameworks and libraries have kind of picked up this convention and used it to their advantage. Uh, one of the big ones is of course uh, Preact, which is an alternative to, to React where you can actually um, use JSX and Preact just as you would with React. 
Um, there's this whole, I have a video about Preact that I just recorded last week. It should be fresh. It kind of delves into how you switch that. But um, the interesting thing here is that when you actually switch to Preact, you actually have to tell um, the compiler that you want to use, uh, where is it, the pragma. You actually want to use H as the compiler rather than fragment. Likewise, there's one of my favorite libraries for CSS and JS is Emotion that lets you kind of override and extend how JSX works by again, so Emotion provides its own create element wrapper essentially that you can then tell your compiler to use instead. So you actually can go here, let's see if this works and actually tell Babel to use this as the function to call when actually making those function calls, which is super cool because the big thing with motion is that you can actually get this fancy CSS prop that lets you dynamically add styles in your JSX directly. And I can then do some optimizations on top of that. Um, if you want to learn more about emotion in JSX, I have a video about it to kind of talk about it more. So check that out if you want to. Additionally, because JSX just compiles down to function calls, there's this really cool repo called Inc that lets you write command line applications with JSX using components that it provides and its own compiler. Um, Inc is really cool because you can just write these really nice command line applications and not really have to worry about all the degree de details. Inc will handle it for you. Of course, I have a library, a, a video for that as well, Inc. Uh, so check that out if you're interested. And then um, just because things never stay still, uh, there is actually a new JSX transform on the horizon, which they're trying to kind of pay down some tech debt, make things a little bit more streamlined for themselves and also the entire JSX industry as a whole. Um, there's a blog post all about it. I also have a video all about it. I talk about these things a lot. I was actually surprised I had videos for all these things. So self-promotion here, if you will. And that is JSX in a nutshell. Being able to compile things, this Babel REPL is the best place to try it out. Definitely encourage you to, as you are playing around, trying to understand how JSX works. Okay, so that was a fun little rundown about what JSX is, why it was made, how you can use it, how the community at large uses it. It's definitely kind of outgrown its importance beyond, not only beyond the React community, because it's still pretty tied to it by and large, but the uh, the concept of having some XML type syntax inside of JavaScript is one that uh, it's kind of funny to think has uh, XML used to be hated. Now it's coming back around and being appreciated again. Uh, if you've learned something, let me know. Uh, if you've found any other interesting use cases for JSX, I'd be curious to hear about that in the comments below as well. If you're not a subscriber, become one, and I will catch you again in a video next week. Stay happy, stay coding.